Hi everyone, Vega here. And in today's video, next in our Let's Talk series, where we just talk basically off the cuff um, about interesting things in, in our galaxy. And today I thought what we'd do is we'd go back through our the list of brightest stars in our skies. I know we've done many videos over the last few years of each individual star, but it's quite often, I, I know I find myself forgetting various details. So I thought I might remind you all about what we do have in our, in our local vicinity. Obviously the sun is the brightest star in our sky by, by in a huge margin there. Yellow dwarf star, G, G class. You don't really need to say much more about the sun. And the brightest star in the night sky, of course, is Sirius. And as you can see there, it's at minus 1.46 visual magnitude. Now, the next brightest star is Canopus, which is min minus 0.74, as you can see. So Sirius is, is around two times brighter. It's about 2.5 magnitudes per, per unit brighter. So, and it's, as you can see, Sirius isn't quite one unit brighter than Canopus. So it's around uh, slightly under two two times brighter than Canopus. Sirius, we're really quite lucky to have it in our, our local area. I always think it's quite um, unusual, I'd say. And I wouldn't say it was hugely unusual, but it is quite unusual to have such a bright star as Sirius nearby, uh, just just eight, eight light years away. And Sirius is, is right at the top end, as you can see there with the A-class. It's almost a B-class B star, um, just at the top end, the A, a class, A0, main sequence star. And yeah, you have to go all the way out to Vega before you find something that's slight, Vega slightly brighter, I think, than Sirius. Uh, and then even further out, I think it's Capella is the next uh, next star that, that might actually brighten Sirius, and that's quite a long way away. So we're very close to the, by far the brightest star in the local area. Most stars in, in our local, you know, 20, I'd, let's say 25 year, 25 light year vicinity. Most stars um, will experience Sirius as, as the brightest star in their sky. Certainly, Alpha Centauri, you know, uh, Procyon, or all all of these stars. Sirius will be far and away the brightest star in their skies too. So it's it really is our local local giant. Um, of course, Sirius does have a companion as well, which is is as you can see in this quite well, quite a nice little picture there, isn't it? which is a little tiny white dwarf star that once upon a time was actually probably a lot bigger than than, than the Sirius A star now. Um, but being bigger, it of course used its fuel a lot quicker and and, and blew up. So uh, a, a binary star system, uh, Sirius, of course. Uh, next in our list is the beautiful Canopus. Uh, Canopus is, is an interesting star, isn't it? Um, because as you can see here, it's got spectral type, another A-class star, but this time it's got the two uh, designation at the end, which means it's a, a sort of very large giant star. I, I always think of Canopus as being an in-between star because it's not quite big enough to be classed really as a super giant. And it's too big to be classed as a giant. So it's, it's some of its details here, it's, it's almost 10 times the mass of the sun. So it's a ginormous star. Uh, with a radius of 73.3, it kind of is 310 light years away, so it's quite a long way away, of course. And famous, of course, for the Dune uh, novels, which is set, Arrakis is actually set in in the Canopus system, which I don't know if you've watched the video on Canopus, you might like to watch it again, but uh, it really doesn't make much sense that, that Arrakis could orbit so close to a, a star of the power of Canopus. So there is a bit of a discrepancy, let's say, in the Dune novels. I don't know if there's a way of um, rectifying that. Uh, I, perhaps watch the video, it's uh, quite interesting. But another another thing about uh, Canopus is really in, in most of, of history, of certainly of human history on Earth, Canopus has been the brightest star in, in our skies. We can see here in this list, you know, about four million years ago, Canopus became the brightest star. And obviously it was a lot brighter then because it was closer, minus 1.86. So, you know, well, at least uh, half times brighter than Sirius now again. And it's, it's actually going away from us, but you can see it, that was the first time it's the brightest. Then it gets replaced by a couple of stars. Then it becomes brightest again for the second time around a million years ago, uh, where it's dimmed some something, hasn't it? Now it's only minus 1.09. Then it gets replaced by Cap Aldebaran and Capella to be become again our, the brightest star in our sky 160,000 years ago. It's a, an apparent magnitude, roughly what it is now. 
then it gets replaced by Sirius a hundred thousand years ago or so which as I say makes Sirius really quite a, an unusual star in, our, in, in Earth's history. Sirius is of course actually approaching the Earth still so it will, it will brighten over the next uh, few thousand next you know, hundred thousand years or so until it slowly fades away and then Vega takes over slightly again but then Canopus again becomes the the brightest star in our skies for another 500,000 years about 500,000 years from now so until then I don't think it comes back again after that so you know Canopus is, is popping up and down on in our night sky all the time as the brightest second brightest so a, a really interesting star. I always find it a bit disappointing that Canopus is so far south that it's quite difficult to see uh, up here in the north, northern hemisphere. But some of you, perhaps in the southern hemisphere, will enjoy it uh, on a regular basis. Uh, the next brightest star, of course, is Alpha Centauri with minus uh, 0.27 brightness, apparent brightness. Alpha Centauri is three stars, of course, um, and. Interestingly, again, if you can see this here, this represents the individual brightnesses of Rigel Centaurus, which is Alpha Centauri A, and Ptolemon, which is part B. And as you can see, Arcturus at minus 0.05 is actually brighter than both individual components of Alpha Centauri. It's just when you add the brightness of the two together that they become brighter than Arcturus. So whether you can classify Alpha Centauri as the third brightest star in our sky, I'm not really sure how, how you decide that. You could say Arcturus is actually brighter because it's only a, an individual star. Anyway, let's have a quick look at Alpha Centauri. Most of you, I won't spend too much time on it because it's, it's a star that's talked about a lot. Um, and, and of course, Alpha Centauri is approaching our solar system. And so you can see here, this is sort of 1,000 years so in about, let's say, 28, 29,000 years, it, it, it will reach to about three light years from us. So, so Alpha Centauri will increase in brightness. Let's, shall we find out what brightness it will be when it reaches uh, perihelion, when it gets closest? Let's have a look. So Alpha Centauri A with a luminosity of 1.5 times our, our sun, when it's at three light years, will reach an apparent magnitude of minus 0.88. So that's just, uh, Rigel Centaurus on its own, and uh, Ptolemon will reach plus 0.31. So Ptolemon would, would actually be really quite bright, wouldn't it? Even if it was on its own, at three light years distance. But let's put those both, both of those into the binary calculations, and what what we get out of that is minus 1.19. So again, what I'm what I'm explaining here is that. When Alpha Centauri reaches this closest approach, its apparent magnitude will be around minus 1.19, which is interesting, isn't it? It won't be quite as bright as Sirius now, but certainly it will be quite a lot brighter than Canopus. So I suspect Alpha Centauri will become the second brightest star in, in our night skies at that point in, in about 28,000 years from now. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Um, let's go back to our list. And of course, next on the list is the beautiful star, the red giant star of Arcturus. Arcturus is an interesting star. It's, as you can see here, it's a K-class, so it's more sort of uh, it's more orange than than you might think of a typical red star like Betelgeuse. It's actually quite orange compared to Betelgeuse Arcturus. K-class uh, three, which is uh, of course a giant star. Um, and one of the interesting things I always find about Arcturus is if we look here, its mass is slightly bigger than the sun, so it's it's not actually very massive. Um, obviously, its radius at 25.4 is, is substantially bigger than the sun, and obviously its luminosity because of the radius is, is a lot more. But in many ways, Arcturus is an analogue of, of what where our sun is going. Um, when our sun becomes red giant uh, in about, what, five billion years or so from now, Arcturus is really similar to what it will be like perhaps slightly bigger i think arcturus is slightly bigger because it will have lost some mass won't it as well uh, in, in the process so perhaps Al arcturus is more of an analog of alpha centauri a or rigel Centaurus in the future but it's, it does sort of give us a an inkling of, of where we're going and interesting about arcturus as well as 
Although most people in the Northern Hemisphere can see Sirius quite easily, I, I know having lived in Spain and, and the UK, that it's very, very distinctive Sirius in the skies. It's actually designated as a Southern Hemisphere star. It's quite southerly, really, which leaves Arcturus as the brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere, which I always thought that was quite interesting. People don't really think of think of that but Arcturus it, for us northerners let's let's us northerners let's let's shall we say is, is actually our brightest star so we're, we're actually a bit of bit of a deficit really aren't we because the, the three brightest stars in the in the skies at night are actually all in the southern hemisphere technically um, then we move on to the next one Vega another wonderful star as I was saying Vega is uh, once you go past Sirius Vega becomes the next next um, sort of brightest it's it's actually slightly bigger than Sirius I think Vega Vega is slightly more powerful than Sirius let's just have a look so we've got luminosity of 40 for Vega and Sirius A has a luminosity of 25.4 so yeah it's Vega slightly brighter than uh, Sirius and, and slightly more massive I think uh, it's another like Sirius though it's almost a B-class star uh, A0 so any any brighter and it starts to become blue really it's almost exact pure white if we can see the bv color index a naught means that the star's pure white vega is a pure white star um which is quite nice but any 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 hotter and it would start to become blue um and as we were talking about northern and southern hemisphere vega is almost as northerly as you can get and certainly in the future vega actually becomes our pole star as well which is really cool i think that's uh don't know exactly when it is but it it replaces polaris at some point uh, becomes our pole star so we're gonna have a very bright star vega is, sort of dips into the minus from time to time doesn't it and apparent magnitude visual magnitude and it originally was the star that most stars were compared against vega was originally given a, a, an apparent magnitude of zero so most stars are compared against vega which makes it a sort of standard bearer star one of the odd things about Vega, of course, is its shape. It's a, it's a sort of a very oblate shape, as we can see here, con compared to the Sun. It's a, a very odd-looking star, isn't it? Uh, which I always find it must be, it looks very strange in the skies of any potential planets in the Vega system. We'll have this sort of egg, egg-looking, sort of slightly blue-white um, star instead of what we what we used to as a circle, isn't it, for the Sun? Um, and it does also have a, a, a dust disk around it, Vega, which you can see from uh, Earth, um, which is another interesting um, part of the star. As you can see here the deb debris disk surrounding Vega. I don't think they found any planets yet, but certainly there is a, a debris disk um, surrounding the star. Vega is obviously being a lot more powerful than the Sun, is actually quite a lot younger as well. Uh, as you can see, look there, 455 million years old. Uh, compared to a four and a half billion for for our sun, so it's it's comparatively very young. And, and uh, another interesting star there. Uh, let's uh, move on. And perhaps we'll do a few more. Capella is another. In, another they're all fascinating star systems, aren't there? Another northern hemisphere star, sixth brightest is Capella's. Actually, got quite a lot of stars. It's only put the two brighter ones there it's got a k and a g so sort of orangey yellow stars or both giant orange yellow stars um but the system itself actually has quite a few other stars as well i think there's uh, at least a couple of red dwarf companions as well yeah h and l so it's, it's a sort of multiplicity system if you like um but both stars are pretty as i say we've got brightest star in our local what we might say 25 light year area of sirius then we move up to vega which is about tw you know slightly twice perhaps twice as bright as uh sirius and sort of almost twice as bright again as, as vega is, is the capella system obviously when you add the two together they, they are quite a lot brighter another star in in the winter hexagon as well which is a beautiful um, hexagon that we can see in in the northern hemisphere certainly in in the winter skies um that's Capella. Uh, I always like the name Capella as well. I think it's a great name for a star. It just sounds like a star, doesn't it? You know, Capella definitely sounds to me like a star. Um, there we go. Look, there, yeah, there's a couple of extra companions as well. H, which actually looks like quite a big red dwarf, really, doesn't it? Um, and, and L, which is, is a very small one. So there, there's the Capella system. Um, again, don't, don't forget to check out the individual videos we've done on all these stars. 
um, if you're more interested in one particular system uh, perhaps the last one we'll do for today uh, and we will continue with this uh, series if, if people are enjoying it um, and we can go again it's it's like the the, the nearest stars sy systems that we, we've did previously we can we can go on forever with this um, there's just so many interesting stars that you know perhaps once we get past Procyon let's say maybe Betelgeuse Aldebaran Antares we start to get into some really quite obs obscure stars that people don't really know much about so I, I was quite enjoy talking about them because uh, uh, they're not really stars that get talked about very often anyway Rigel uh, doesn't really need much introduction does it so uh, you know by far and away the the brightest and most massive star in, in our local area uh, local 1000 year 1000 light year uh, area Blue supergiant. Uh, there's the one A designation. You know the A, uh, the one A giving it a supergiant designation. B eight. So Rigel is. People do think of it as a blue star, but again, it's 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 only just in the B B category. It, it's almost an A class star. So it's, if you was to pick out a blue star, I don't think really you should be picking Rigel out because it, it's it, it's a sort of blue tinge star rather than a fully blue. Um, star. There are much bluer stars than Rigel, and uh, it's also a, um, a binary system. Most people only think about the main uh, supergiant star, but there are other stars, and in their own right, so they're all big, big B-class stars as well. Although main sequence rather than um, supergiant, like the the A, the A star, both B A and B B, are, uh, and I, th I think C as well. Uh, B-class main sequence star. So the, this whole system is really powerful. Um, but the, obviously the three smaller stars get dwarfed by the the giant um i, I always like to think of Rigel as, as i always think of like beetlejuice as the father of our local area like if, if we had a father it would be beetlejuice and I, if we had a mother i always think of it as being Rigel. i don't know why i've i've decided that in my my head but um, perhaps some of you like might might have your own ideas about, about that but I, I always like to think of it as the mother of our local area uh, and of course in the future Rigel will probably surpass Betelgeuse in size uh, it may even e expand outwards uh, into the sort of hypergiant when, when it when it does eventually burn its its hydrogen fuel out and starts burning helium it will expand and it could even expand past past the radius of stars like Betelgeuse and Antares and even possibly reach the, the limits of some of the most massive, sorry, most uh, voluminous stars in, in our Milky Way, the likes of VY Canis Majoris and, and company. We don't really know, it's, it's, it's a quite a delicate balance in stars, so we don't really know exactly how big it'll be, Sim similar with the Sun as well, we don't fully know how big the red giant version will be. Um, but there is a potential in Rigel that it, it could become one of the most very most voluminous stars in the entire galaxy uh, you know in, in several tens of millions of years from now and I, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll wrap it up there because this, this is clearly going to be a several parter uh, again uh, next time if this video is successful obviously if folks don't want to don't want to see another part we won't make one but I, I really enjoy talking about uh, the brightest stars obviously um, and we've got some beauties coming up as well Procyon one of my favorite stars Achenar is, is a fascinating star Betelgeuse doesn't really need any introduction does it uh, Beta Centauri or Hadar Altair some some great stars coming up so don't, don't forget to um, stay tuned to, to the channel uh, perhaps in a, in a few weeks time we'll we'll add a second part to this so i think we'll wrap it up there so, you know just take care of yourselves uh, look after yourselves and your families always important to, to remember to do that uh, and i'll i'll see you on the next one <laughs>